Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, we're continuing our series on the great engineering universities of the world, but mostly America. This time focusing on Georgia Tech. Go Mud Ducks. Go Mud Ducks. Question for you, Luke, since we're going Mud Ducks early here. Do you know what the mascot is for Georgia Tech? I thought I did. It was a I, I think it's a bee, right? It, it's a you know, it's a yellow jacket, but a I feel buzzy. like I feel His name like is Buzz. Yeah, that was going to be my bonus question for you. Good job, Buzz yeah. the yellow jacket. So. so I feel like a lot of colleges like they have like like an original mascot, and then like apparently they got this this car too yeah. that they yeah, use the, the Ramblin' Wreck. Yeah, we'll talk about that one in a minute. You'll have um, to talk about that one. I read it and I was like, meh, I'm going to just go ahead and skip that part of history. Okay. So. Um, so a little bit of history for you, Luke. Shoot. Georgia Tech, or the Georgia School of Technology, as it was known at the time, that was founded in October 13th of 1885. That was a long time ago. Quite a bit. Uh, opened its doors in 1888, so it took them about three years to get off the ground to a whopping 84 students. So, you know, not a big opening class. Fun uh, fact. Oh, hit me. The two first people that graduated with an engineering degree, they flipped a coin to see who would get the degree first. No. Did they really? The, it, 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 it was on it was on some, you know, fun facts. But yeah, so there were two engineers. It was the two first engineering degrees, flipped a coin. They decide who would go first. Kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah. Um, during the first 50 years, the Georgia School of Technology grew from like a really focused trade school, like a lot of the schools that kind of started up around that time, into much more of like a technology university. And this is then how it transformed into this, what now is just like a giant engineering university. Um, in 1948, the school's name changed. So what's that? Like 60 years later, basically. Um, it changed to Georgia Institute of Technology to reflect its growing focus and like its scientific research and all of that good stuff. So why do they, why is their logo like a G, like it would be G-I-T? Isn't Maybe. it just G-T? It is just G-T. You're right. You should write in and complain. Like... I guess maybe this has been an oversight for all these years, Luke. <laughs> Do you, or maybe just Git does just doesn't sound yeah. like it just doesn't look good. It doesn't encourage people to come to your school when you're telling them to get get Jordan. get out of here. I just I just realized that their logo is a G and it's G I T. Well, we'll have to take that up with like the, MIT. Uh, they put the I in MIT. Like why they omit the I? Maybe they didn't want to be RIT, associated. Rochester, Rochester Institute of Technology. Like well, why they omit the I? Okay, never mind. I digress. The South, the South, you do digress. Um, women students were admitted in 1952. And in 1961, Georgia Tech became the first university in the, quote, Deep South to admit African American students without a court order. So like pretty terrible that that's even a statement that we like make, but that's, mm -hmm. that's good on Georgia Tech. So good for them. And that is all the history that I have for you. Anything else you have? So apparently, you and I must have been on the same history page because I, <laughs> I called. Same. I called the uh, dean, and this is what he told me. Oh, okay. Dean Georgia Tech. Uh, so I have. I, I, it's a little bit of history. Uh, so the very first structure erected uh, on campus was the Tech Tower, and it was originally uh, called the Academic Building. Uh, its doors opened in 1888, um, and the sign Tech appeared in 1918. So there's a big sign that says Tech at the top. And there was a fad of uh, stealing the T in the word Tech, apparently. They'd really? Climb the building, they'd steal the T. Uh, apparently, this was a big issue uh, that lasted for about 30 years. And then finally, uh, in 1980, they actually welded the T's <laughs> and the That'll letters down them. Uh, and they set an alarm. Uh, and actually, you can be ex you can be expelled uh, if you steal the T. I wonder if you stole the E, the C or the H, if they would care. Yeah. Is the rule specific to the T? Yeah. I wonder why it's the T. How odd. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I would think couldn't the G tell you. or the G and the T, not the I, of course, but the G and the T. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. Very interesting. Uh, any other history you have for me? Nah, that's really all I got. All 
All right. Uh, you want to talk about the undergraduate programs? Yeah. So let's start with the numbers first, James. So I want the uh, numbers. And it's crazy to me how much it is to go in state versus out of state. And oh, it all, yeah. And it always it always shocks me every time we do these universities, like the difference and why anybody would ever choose to go to uh, an out of state university. But if you are in state for the 2022 year, this is this is tuition only. This doesn't include housing and all the other accoutrements that go along with attending. <laughs> oh. uh, you like that? Yeah, uh, that's attending, but just tuition for in state is ten thousand two hundred and fifty eight dollars. Seems like a Cheap. deal. Oh, oh my goodness, that's pocket change for you and I, James. I mean, yeah, if you have a successful podcast like us, obviously. Yeah, of course. But let's say you're out of state. Oof. It's going to be $31,370. So it's literally like three times as much if you're an out-of-state student. Like, why would you never... Why would, I, I guess if you're getting scholarships or you're getting a full ride or you have really rich parents that can just pay, you know, hundreds of thousands sure. of dollars. Um, but like, why would you go into that amount of debt to graduate from a school if you could go to a, an in-state school and graduate with potentially little to no debt? I, I'm with you on this. Um, it doesn't make sense to me, but, you know, maybe maybe it's like the only thing I can think of is like your parents were alums and like you kind of grew up in that culture and mm-hmm. therefore you, for some reason, really want to do that. Uh, that was not the case for me. So a couple of other numbers. This is oh, their engineering yeah. program. Um, there, no, I'm sorry. This is an engineer. This is the overall. Um, so there are for the fall 2021, there are uh, 18,061 students enrolled. And 32% of those are women. Did you steal this from the Georgia Tech website? Absolutely. Did, n- did you not. type it or did you just screenshot the pictures <laughs> I, they had? I, I do. I, I screen grabbed their <laughs> infographic. I love um, it. Uh, it, it. It's number one in engineering degrees awarded overall to women and minorities. Yeah. Uh, how good and is that? In engineering doctoral degrees, it's number one for awards to black students. That's so cool. Yeah. Georgia Tech. Yeah, very. Who knew? It, it's interesting because I feel like they were maybe on the tail end of being progressive back when they were admitting those students, but now they're number one for uh, minorities uh, and women in giving degrees. So it's interesting how the the pendulum has swung I, to the other side. Yeah, I wonder about that. I didn't do <laughs> shockingly to everyone, I'm sure I didn't do great research on that topic. But like they said, how they were the first school not to or to admit uh, African-American students without being required by law. But I wonder, like in the time frame of that, or did they also have a law and then do it without it? I don't know. But yeah, yeah, you're right. It is very interesting. Um, I saw a few other numbers on their shoot their page that I stole. Um, Just kind of like if you want to go there or you're thinking about it, they have two million square feet of research space and instructional space there. That's crazy. And if you look at their pages of the different programs, they have all of their different maker spaces Mm -hmm. and stuff listed out there. They have some sweet things going on. Like they have some really nice maker spaces. Uh, Let's see, 1,377 new research awards in uh, FY20. So I guess I was like last year and about 280 million in research expenditures, which is also crazy. They have 540 academic f- uh, faculty. And I don't know what an NAE member is, but they have 30 of them. National Association of Educators? I don't know. That seems no. like <laughs> that doesn't, them. that seems way too easy. Yeah, it would be too easy. Um, so let's, you want to talk about the schools? I want to, but before we do that, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. Georgia Tech. It is actually the NAE. (laughs) Who we don't. So we can't get the money because we don't know who they are. Right, exactly. We didn't know who to reach out to. That makes total sense now. Uh, No sponsors, but we do have a couple of shout outs. Who do we got? First off, we have Eduardo G. Um, It says... Thought it would be cool to hear your guys' perspective on Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, Obispo, O-B-I-S-P-O, as an engineering school. 
Hmm. Uh, that that was the the whole email. So a short email, a school I've never heard of in any way, uh, other than the Cal Poly part. But a quick Google search told me that one of their alum is, or alumni is Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, we definitely have to so, add I mean, that to the list. Yeah, what more do you sure. need than that? He's way better than any of the Georgia Tech alums. So oh, way better. So like, I think that's on the list and, and we'll be doing it soon. Uh, next we have Ivo S. So I'm sorry that I'm probably pronouncing I-V-O incorrectly. I asked my brother and he said that's how he would say it as well. So it's his fault if not. Uh, the email goes, love your show. You should check out the incredible machine. It's the first Rube Goldberg machine type of game. It was super sad you did not mention it and credited that awful garbage game. Ah, well. Uh, this was the game that got me into gaming. I apologize. So I apologize for crediting the garbage game, which I don't know which one it is, but maybe it's Fantastic Contraption. But uh, sorry about that. That being said, um, the email was titled, the subject was, Hi, James. So that made me happy since they just know I'm the one that's- And they ignore me. This. Yeah, well- they do ignore you because so like I feel like to read the email. I feel like sometimes I'm, I sign the emails with your name as well. I feel like I'm pen to your teller or like which one's which? I don't know. <laughs> the one that doesn't talk, I I think is you, but he's yeah. the smarter one, which I'm also the smarter is. one. So, oh. but I'm better than you right oh, now. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know. Um, yeah, that is it for shout outs. But if any of you would like your own shout out, I'd suggest writing in on a Thursday because that's when I really read any of these emails and might actually write back. Uh, if you just want to say hi, if you want to request some stickers, which will take forever to get there, anything of the sort, why don't you go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share. And as always, we love the reviews and you can always tell your smart devices to play the Unprofessional Engineering Podcast. Fantastic. On to the undergraduate programs in engineering, Luke. So I saw eight. Was that the number you saw? Of programs? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have 10 listed. Oh, okay. Well, the eight that I have, and I'm just going to run through them, and I'm going to point out some of the, the more interesting ones. Uh, first one is aerospace engineering, and this is the Guggenheim School of Aerospace Engineering. It's one of the oldest and largest aerospace programs in the country. And I'm assuming Guggenheim is just some family that is into museums, the Guggenheim, and <laughs> and and I Georgia know. Tech. I, I, I should have probably did a little Maybe bit of this research. this needs to go on the list too. I don't know. It, it might need to go on the list. Um, they also have a uh, chemical and biomolecular engineering school, uh -huh. uh, electrical and computer engineering, uh, material science and engineering. Uh, the one that is most interesting to me is the industrial and system engineering. Reason being, James, it's the number one in the country. It is. Uh, and it's called uh, the Stewart School of Industrial and System Engineering. And they also have civil and environmental, eh, uh, biomedical engineering, mechanical engineering, and I think I already mentioned material science. So those are the eight. What You said you had two additional ones? Uh, I think they probably, the list I bro had just broke them out because like biomedicals listed and biomedicals oh, okay. listed. Uh, but the rankings real quick, industrial one, Aerospace 2, Civil 2, Chemical 2, Mechanical 2, geez Louise, Biomedical 3, Environmental 3, and those ones I think are kind of like siblings to Mechanical, right? Mm -hmm. um, electrical 4, Materials 4, and then Comp Eng coming in at a lowly fifth place. So, so. I could have swore we've done these before and different schools were in those those rankings. So I'm wondering is, I know they have like the the world news and they have like the Princeton review and all those different ones. I'm, I'm wondering like, are these, are these rankings kind of gamed a little bit to make them look better than they actually are? Yeah. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, I'm just happy that MIT wasn't mentioned. So, and now okay. I've gone and done it. I'm exactly. Sorry. Apparently their industrial engineering program is so good. Not only is it the number one undergraduate, it's the number one graduate program. So if you're, if I was you're going to say that, yeah, if you're into uh, uh, industrial engineering, I, I guess Georgia tech is the place you go. Well, I mean, if you're in state, <laughs> if, exactly. If you're in state, you're out of state. Eh. 
Real quick on the grad schools, I saw, like you said, industrial number one, crazy, biomedical two, civil three, environmental three, aerospace, electrical, and mechanical four, chemical five, computer six, material seven, and nuclear engineering ninth. How do you have Nuki as, as a an, grad program? But not but an not undergrad. undergrad. I was thinking yeah, the exact same that's thing. That's asinine. Uh, I always loop in computer science here as well, because I think they're pretty closely related. Uh, overall, number six uh, in their undergrad programs. But if you break it down a little bit more for artificial intelligence, they're number five. Programming language, they're number 15. So don't go there for that. Uh, systems, they're number four. And theory, number 13. Um, yeah. Also, industrial design which again, we did an episode on what is industrial design, I believe. And it's this is a great school for that. They're one of the top in the country for that as well. So all good there. Um, I have a few stats on how you get in, acceptance, all that good stuff. Should I would love that? to hear some of that. I, I knew you would. So the acceptance rate at Georgia Tech GT is 22.6%. Now this hurts my brain. That feels high. Well, it does feel high. For a yes. school that's ranked this this well. Okay. This is overall Georgia Tech, okay. not okay. engineering. The app, their engineering page was not good. They need more web designers. Yeah, they um, do. <laughs> the, the average GPA at Georgia for, for getting into Georgia Tech is a 4.07. Now, back in my day, we went to four. And I understand that some classes are weighted more heavily and stuff now, but 4.07, that just doesn't make sense to me. So basically you need to be top of oh, your class. You just said that's average? That's like the average acceptance GPA. Is above a 4.0 <laughs> is the average. <laughs> yes. That's why this doesn't make sense to me. No so wonder basically I didn't taking go there. AP courses, IB, whatever that is, irritable bowel courses, all those. <laughs> average SAT score. Uh, when you add the two up is a 1465. So another reason you didn't go there out of yes. 1600, the 25th percentile. So like you're the bums, you got a 1390 and the 75th percentile is a 1540. Crazy. Uh, the ACT, which I think is made up. Um, I think Ohio <laughs> uses it. it. The average is a 33. Um, that explains a lot about Ohio. It does. Uh, they, I had a the list of com comparable colleges uh, to get into Brown University, Cornell. So this like Cornell's a great school. Brown's a great school. Uh, Amherst, Notre Dame, uh, Tufts, Northeastern, and Georgetown. Like these are all really good schools. So Heck Georgia yeah. Tech, I mean, you're you're doing a good job. Uh, ethnicity: thirty eight percent white, thirty nine percent Asian, ten percent Hispanic, nine percent African American, four percent uh, two or more ethnicities. Countries. Brazil, Canada, China, India, Colombia, Indonesia, Panama, Saudi Arabia, obviously not counting the United States in there. And then the breakdown I saw for gender, male 61, female 39%. And that's about all I have for that. Interesting. Anything you wanted to add in there? Uh, so a, a couple other more like rankings uh, mm -hmm. is they were there the advanced technology development center the atdc it was recognized <laughs> by forbes magazine as one of the 12 incubators changing the world it was wow. founded in 1980 and it's one of the oldest technology incubators uh, in the united states with more than 2 billion raised by over 150 graduates that is so these are those like spinoffs that like start as like some kind of capstone project in a graduate degree program more than likely. And it turns into like Uber or it turns into like some kind of robotic, you know, whatever. Imagine being so smart or so good at stuff that you like do this like senior project or this capstone project, whatever. And that turns into a company for you to just go get rich off of. Or then yeah. there's me and I'm like, I got to see. Hooray. <laughs> Goodness. Before we go on with any more stats or anything, Luke, we need, we need to take a break for this week's Luke's rant. So this rant, I may have done this before on one of our colleges, Probably. but it's it's coming back up again because uh, it's midsummer. Uh, my daughter is missing school. Like what kid misses school? She wants to be in school. She's terrible. Oof. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I think I may have mentioned my wife works at a local university where my daughter gets completely free tuition if she attends. 
and or guess my what? wife spent entirely too much money. Exactly. And, and, and the thing too is the degree that she thinks she wants is available at the school my wife works at. And then there's a list of hundreds of other schools that she can go to on what's called tuition exchange. Oh, that are like partners. Yeah. Do you think do you think that the schools my daughter wants to go to are any of those schools where of basically not. we could like send her to college for essentially housing and you know books kind of thing. Apps there's literally like 150 schools there and none of them are on her list. Where does she uh, want to go? Michigan. Uh oh, Georgia no. Georgia Tech is on her list. Yeah, better uh, than Michigan. Virginia Tech is on her list. Like, but why wouldn't UVA be on the list? It's like right down the street. So UVA? yeah, yeah, University of Virginia. Oh, you don't want her to go there. Why not? I like are, UVA. Are, are they in the Are they in the trade program? They're not. Oh, because it's going to cost you a bajillion dollars. A bajillion, Luke. I, I like Charlottesville. I'm a big fan. It is. Uh, it is a nice little place. But yeah, so it just I, I don't know. I, I mean, she's only going in the tenth grade. We have a few more years, but we're she's already like ranking colleges, looking at programs, and it's just like it, it it's going to be a full blown family fight when it comes to like where she's going to be allowed to go to college and where she gets. Now she's a really smart student. She's one of those above 4.0 students, which I never knew you could get. It's, she she explained to me what. <laughs> Um, like taking advanced classes does yeah. it gets weighted differently on your GPA so she technically has enough a GPA to get into Georgia Tech right now so well good luck to you and good luck <sighs> to her um, I, I hope you both you know get what you want out of this I told her to hit CCAC fine by me it's yeah. a great community college here yeah $72 funny. a credit is it <laughs> Something like that. Something it's, like that. It's Perfect. super cheap. I love it. Um, all right, moving on. That's so funny that you we complain about like the out of state every time, and everyone you list is like fifty k to yeah, go there. Terrible. Oh, <laughs> That's UVA. Perfect. Uh, okay. Um, where do you want to go next, Luke? I just I have a bunch of fun facts. I don't know if you want to roll through some of the classes like you always do, oh, or some goodness, other things. You know, so I've gone through the classes so many times that I've left it off this time. But you go ahead and listen to our other great engineering university ones. They're all and the same. And I promise they're yeah, the ones you're gonna hear are all gonna be generally yeah, the you're same. You're gonna have to do statistics. You're gonna have to Ugh. do some kind of physics. You're gonna have to do you know thermal equations and. Can you pass uh, differential equations? Okay, good. Then go to engineering. If exactly. Not, Exactly. Uh, then don't worry about yeah. it. Uh, let's hear some facts. Okay, so uh, so these are more fun facts. Oh, um, fun some ones. of these seem like it could potentially be hazing. I'm not going to say one way or another because we don't agree with that. <laughs> no. Um, but apparently, there's something called rats. This is re I saw that. recently acquired tech students. So uh, this week, all the tech students, so everybody in the engineering program, uh, is a week where the first year students learn all about uh, the tech camp traditions, not hazing, nothing like that. Uh, and apparently, I don't know if they still do this one, but one of the ones they had was they had to wear these red hats all the time everywhere they went. So if you were a first year student, you had to literally, you were forced to wear like a red hat, like around campus, like all the time. So people could like know that you were a freshman engineering student. Um, I thought that was a weird one. Seems a little hazing to me. I'm not going to say it is. We'll call it a tradition. What What's the movie where they, they're, is it Dazed and Confused or something where they're like, fresh meat, and they chase them down <laughs> with the paddles and whack them? I, I'm a, um, that's I, what I, I'm envisioning. Yeah, I, I, we're not going to say that's happening because we okay. don't approve of that sort of no, stuff. No, no, don't uh, eat children. Another interesting fact. So, George, uh, this one, I did. I, Hindsight, I probably remember seeing this, okay. um, but Georgia Tech's campus was the site of the official Olympic Village. I saw for that. For the Atlanta, Georgia Summer Olympics in 1996, a couple years after I graduated high school. I'm sure I was watching the Olympics. They probably yeah. used the stadium there for some different events, I imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. So whenever all the students were out, Georgia Tech was like, let's figure out how to make some money with all the students gone for the summer and we'll rent out all their uh their apartments so uh, i thought that was kind of cool i uh i don't recall it being at georgia tech i remember it being in atlanta it was that when there was the bomb they had the bomb scare the bomb i think so there. yeah I, yeah i don't i don't remember it that much but i remember having a crush on one of the gymnastics girls because that was ever going to happen but what else do you got uh interesting 
Uh, Herbert Sh- Sharif. Oh, yeah. Yeah. S- Serif. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't read my own typing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Herbert Seraf, uh, he got a Bachelor of Science in the 40s. Uh, he helped develop a scale of measuring hurricane intensity, calling oh. the Seraf Simpson Hurricane Scale. Interesting. Um, thought that, and, and I guess hurricanes, because of where they are, you know, you know hurricanes happen it's... more than tornadoes. Yeah. Uh, you know the difference between a hurricane and a tornado? Water? Yes. <laughs> I don't I, think I, that's it. I, but... I, 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 I don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the, uh, the Georgia Institute of Technology or get, uh, yeah. has produced 14 astronauts, the most of any university, uh, a cat by the name of John Young, he graduated in 52, uh, is the longest career as an astronaut. He became the first person to make six space flights over 42 years of Holy active service. Cow. So first of all, must have I been an old timer. I don't know if I want like some geriatric person <laughs> going to space. I feel like that's a bit of a, I'm just saying, I feel like it could potentially be a bit of a liability sending it like, what if he like had a heart attack or I'm, I'm sure he's a fitness test, but just saying good, good on you, John Young. I yeah. thought that's pretty cool. I didn't know that fact about the most astronauts, but when I was going through the alumni list that we'll talk about here in a little bit, I just put a note that was like, they got a ton of astronauts. That's all I listed. Like, there's a bunch. So like when, when you Google like alumni, they bring up like a picture list and you can kind of scroll through it if anybody okay. does that themselves. The thing I thought, the thing that struck me was it was either an astronaut or Jeff Foxworthy. It was- Why the, you ruined the Jeff Foxworthy? He's got to be the best <laughs> alum out of Georgia sorry. Tech, right? Like, it's like, it's either people who are on the edge of- human you know exploration or you might be a redneck or it might be a redneck (laughs) comedian i mean it's just like uh, there doesn't seem to be uh, like most colleges and universities we've done alumni for there's like a there's like a a layer like there's there's executives there's like explorers inventors there's kind of like actors this was you might be a redneck jeff foxworthy comedian or people on the edge of human exploration with nothing in the middle i thought that was kind of crazy yeah, that that was very crazy. Uh, one one thing I wanted to throw in here is I stole from Reddit uh, some feedback from Susan Fong. I'll use her whole name since it was on Reddit from yep. 1990, a 1999 graduate. And these are the reasons that Susan thought Georgia Tech is cool and kind of a stand. Okay. I was a nerd. I am a nerd. And frankly, I love being a nerd. So I liked that opening. Um, for me, choosing an engineering school meant suddenly I was surrounded by an entire campus of nerds. So if you're a nerd, like, you know, this is your place, this is your people, but other things I enjoyed the apartment style dorms for upperclassmen are awesome. The rec center's amazing. I deeply enjoyed my sorority experience, uh, meeting women across all majors with similar chat challenges was awesome uh and many of them were nerds and finding study groups for hard classes made everything better uh college is supposed to be fun you'll have plenty of time to work later in your life make sure that you're choosing a place where you're going to be happy and i thought that was kind of nice that uh, she threw that in there but i'm sure a lot of those things like sorority life if that's important to you are great at other colleges as well but i love the nerd part it's great to hear about the apartment style dorms because i know at penn state they're terrible um so yeah some things so, to keep in mind. so not to so not to say only nerds can go there because of not only not only is it's it's obviously georgia tech so it is an engineering technical mm-hmm. focused school but they have a a college of business they have a college of computing they have a college of design obviously the engineering colleges we talked about and they also have a uh college of liberal arts and another one of science so it's not just for engineering nerds they have all the programs there now obviously the engineering and the the tech is the focus i think but uh yeah, yeah. so famous alums luke now that we know jeff foxworthy went there comedian of on the blue collar comedy tour and producer of it he also was hosting the Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? So clearly the best, most successful alumni that they have. Alum? Alum. alum. They have. I mean, the only the only person who even gets close to Jeff Foxworthy, I would say, is uh, former president Jimmy Carter. I mean, not nearly as important as Jeff no, Foxworthy. No. But, you know, Jimmy Carter, he's up there. President Peanut, right? 
Mm -hmm. The class of 1946, 39th president of the United States, won the Nobel Peace Laureate, uh, was a Georgia senator, you know, not not Jeff Foxworthy, yeah, but okay. I mean, it's not could you be a redneck comedy or are you smarter than a fifth grader, but, you know, right. leader of yeah. the free world, I get it, you know. Yeah, well, that minor, minor things. Uh, Carrie Mullis won the 1993 Nobel Prize for Chemistry, so he did a good job there. Uh, a few that I saw that I thought were interesting. John Brock, the chairman and CEO of Coca-Cola Enterprises, which makes sense, Hotlanta and all. Um, really important, 1968 graduate Joe Rogers Jr. was the longtime CEO of Waffle House. Oh, I love me Followed some Waffle by House. Walter Emmer, the 1989 graduate who's president and CEO of Waffle House. Mm. Um, there's J. Paul Rains, the CEO of GameStop. So, you know, good luck keeping your job there, J. Paul Rains. Dean Kamen, the guy that started First Robotics, uh, oh, really? was I listed didn't see from that. there as well. Yeah, he, he was listed as, as he was in like the, the beginning of the list, if you looked. Now, oh. it may have been like one of those honorary degrees. Like I, I, I couldn't uh, see if that's where he specifically went. Ooh, so. I think Georgia Tech should give us an honorary degree. If any of you... <laughs> Could, have could connections you, at Georgia Tech. Hook us up with an honorary degree. Could could you imagine how many degrees you and I would have to be the most educated people as much as we have begged for honorary degrees Honestly. every time we've done these? Like yeah. uh, did I tell you somebody messaged me on LinkedIn and was like, yo, like there, did you know there's a Herzing University? Like you should for sure get an honorary degree from them. So I agree with that. Herzing University, hook me up. Uh let's see. My next line was a whole pile of astronauts, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, Tom McDermott, 82, was the graduation year. Deputy Director and Director of Research at the Georgia Tech Research Institute since 2007. Previously, the Chief Engineer and Program Manager for Lockheed Martin's F-22 Raptor avionics team. So I didn't see a lot of super successful engineers outside of NASA and being an astronaut. So I wanted to call Tom out there because that's a pretty cool project. So not to make um, anybody feel bad that is thinking about attending uh -oh. uh, GIT. I don't like this. Um, uh, the the first uh, the incoming first year student is the first author to have a published paper. Excuse uh, me. So there, there's a student in high school. So he's literally a high school student that is a published author uh in the journal of chemical physics Ooh, coming in this year coming in this year is a freshman in a university so no pressure hey, being Don't second best is okay <laughs> <laughs> wow good for them how many papers do you have published ah uh, not not many i mean many. Does, like in my head mm. does that count like I mean, it does to me Luke. like things it i think about writing yeah, no. We'll yeah. That. So this cat by the name of Rohad Datta, um, he's 18 years old, recently graduated uh, from a school in Atlanta, uh, is the first ever freshman to have a published paper uh, oh. coming into a university at Georgia, at Georgia Institute of Technology or GIT. Better known as GIT. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Very cool. Um, anything else you want to add in there before we wrap things up? I think that's all I got. Awesome. Well, hopefully you all learned something about GIT, the Georgia Institute of Technology. Um, you know, great school, great engineering programs, pretty good comp sci, you know, might be a great place for you to go, especially if you live in Georgia. If any of you want us to, or any of you want to tell us about your experience at Georgia Tech, if you want to, I don't know, say hi, if you want to tell us what we screwed up about this, anything like that, why don't you go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering.com at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.